2023 NBA All-Star. And so Ryan and Ashley Smith wanted to take a few minutes at the start of the week to tell us a little bit about the weekend. And we are thankful to have two of our colleagues from the NBA here too. Um, Kelly Flato, the NBA's EVP of Global Events, and Joey Graziano, the NBA's SVP and Head of Global Events Strategy and Development. So Ryan and Ashley, I'm gonna hand it over to you to get us started with some opening comments, please. So first of all, we're, we're super excited for All-Star. I mean, we haven't, we've, we've been working behind the scenes, but we haven't really addressed it head on just because we've been busy. Um, I think that in working with Joey, who thank you for camping out in Utah for, I mean, what is it, 27 days? Yeah. I mean, uh, it's good, uh, good Marriott points. Good Marriott <laughs> points. Um, we couldn't be more excited. I mean, we haven't had the game here in 30 years. Uh, I specifically remember as a kid, obviously not going to the game or any of the the activities uh, at, at this arena, but was able to go to jam session. And that left a, a pretty big uh, impact on me personally um, as a kid because I felt like I was able to participate in All-Star Weekend. Um, and we made a tremendous push to bring that back. Um, maybe even against some of the, the, the NBA was kind of over that, and now we're, we're having it back. Um, and this is, a, this is a really important moment for our state to shine. I mean, it's been 30 years. I mean, to give you an idea of, of what the difference is, I mean, 10 times the hotel rooms need to be secured. Um, there's two big events over the next two weeks. It's the Super Bowl and All-Star. I know that there's probably 120,000 people coming into this town, and, and we're ready for it. Um, I think first of all, I just want to thank our state and local um, governments to for for their impact and their partnership as we've done this together. Um, the All Star Alliance, are both our, our county and city mayors. Um, it's been it's been incredible to watch this kind of ramp up. So that's that's where my excitement is. <laughs> well, yeah, same. Just kind of to echo Ryan. Um, we can't wait for next week. And um, I think when I think of All-Star, I kind of have three big things in my head, which one is access, is that we, this is a really cool event where we are giving a lot of people in our state access to kind of come in and touch the NBA. And the Jazz, the organization has done such a good job at creating a whole schedule of events. There's so many opportunities. There's so many different places you can be and all sorts of price points and even you know offering to ages under the age of 12. Secondly, I think about the community impact. Um, there is a massive list of organizations and HBCU communities that are being positively affected, um, whether it's part of the $3 million that the MBA is, is kind of handing out to them or the day of service or you know all the events we just have so many organizations that will be positively affected. Um, and then lastly, I think about just the opportunity to showcase Utah. I mean, we are, we're ultimate jazz fans and we have been for a long time. And we're also massively passionate about Utah. And what a cool opportunity for everyone else to see what we see. And um, we kind of have it all here. That's. That's what I always say, Utah has it all. We've got this awesome tech sector and we have the culture of generosity and we have the physical beauty and we have so much that is really cool to have a platform to showcase everyone else what we see. Um, so yeah, I'm just, I can't wait for next week. Question for this for both of you, maybe you mentioned 30 years ago and how much has changed and, and uh, actually maybe from your perspective, what the all-star game presents as far as a unique opportunity to, to tell Utah a story. Now, I'm not sure if that's maybe an underlying theme, Utah has it all, but, but, uh, but how do you see um, us being able to, to tell that story through this event? Well, I think, I mean, bringing this many people in is amazing. And um, we just have enough events lined up that there's just a lot of different perspectives that we get to see, we get to be a part of. And I think luckily we have people outside of Utah who are coming, whether it's they have celebrity status or, or fame or whatever, but they're excited and proud of Utah. 
And so it's fun for the 120,000 people to be able to see it through their eyes and through our eyes and kind of all these different events, whether it's the crossover and maybe a visitor gets to see the youth of Utah in one of these basketball courts, you know, playing, or maybe they are going to a concert and they kind of get to see that fun vibe. There's just all the different stories are being told, I think, throughout the schedule. Yeah, I think the only thing I would add is just um, I've been to All Star Games where people haven't wanted to go to that city or haven't been as excited. This is not one. Uh, I'll just tell you from the phone calls I'm getting um, to how many people we can't accommodate who want to be a part of the programming. And Joey's done a great job <laughs> trying to navigate that, um, whether it's our, our legends who have played here, um, whether it's performers who want to be a part of it. Um, I know from just the NBA governors how many people are coming in to ski and, and really, as Ashley said, just showcase the entire state. Um, you know, if we think about the tech conference, right, which is a big part, um, we are a prime example of not just theory about tech, what happens when it actually works and the growth of the state. And I think about it from a kid is like, okay, I used to drive up to Salt Lake and there was a massive gap between like American Fork and Bluffdale right or sandy that doesn't exist anymore it's filled in with this massive tech hub which i mean most states are pretty jealous of because what that is done is brought jobs it's 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 created one of the fastest growing economies number one for upward mobility um and i think that's just getting started and i think everyone gets to see that historically people have come here you know everyone i talk to i, I live in a world pretty much where most of my business colleagues are outside of here. They all pop in. And, but they would leave. There wasn't the infrastructure to get them to stay. And now people are saying, hey, wait a minute, I can work anywhere. I can actually live in this environment and, and be here. And we can look around both at Qualtrics or here at the Jazz at how many people um, are being imported into this state who are saying, wow, this is, this is a breath of fresh air. Um, even... Even a couple games ago, when, when Travis Scott and those guys were here, like he came in at halftime and we're sitting on watching the game and he just screams out, I love Utah. I was like, what, what was that? He's like, I love Utah. There's just something here that I love. I always come here, I see the mountains, I see everything. It's refreshing, it's wellness, it's healthy. Like, I love it here. And that's, that's the vibe we get a lot. And that's a story we probably need to tell a lot more. Brian, I know um, people have no idea what kind of goes on behind the scenes. And I've been to the last probably 10 All-Star games in different capacities, but can you give us an idea of, I mean, uh, there's some similar elements in each All-Star weekend, but can you give us kind of an idea of when you sit down with the NBA, how do you become different? I mean, what are some of the things you talk about to to make this experience different than the one before and the one before? Um, well, so first, I mean, I'm going to actually let Joey take a crack at that first because he's been at all of those and he can maybe explain why our effort as a jazz organization in the state's different. I don't, I don't know what. Yeah, I, I would just say, I mean, our focus is to build a, a custom curated event for each All-Star that amplifies the value and vision not only of the league but also of the host city. And what I have so appreciated about the partnership with the Jazz, and in particular Ryan and Ashley, is how authentic and how personal this is. And so as we think about the things that matter and are going to come to life for all of our fans, not only locally but around the world, it's going to have um, the, those values sort of red thread throughout everything. And so we think about something like addressability that Ashley referenced. Um, making sure that we are offering more opportunities for fans to be able to engage in All-Star. Over 100,000 separate ticketed opportunities that will exist at this All-Star. Um, a fan event that will be four times larger than we had last year. That sits with, with the two people sitting at this table. That was their vision from day one as we were having these conversations. But also, we're at this transformative moment in the league, um, in a state that I believe has been truly transformed. And uh, that's, you're going to see that come across in the way in which we think about the NBA app and NBA ID that are programs that are going to bring what's happening here to our fans around the world. I think all of that is going to make for an all-star that you have never seen before. And that's why we're so incredibly excited about the next uh, two weeks. It's, it's really going to be incredible. 
So I think I think if you think about jam session, I'll just give you one example of that. I, I specifically remember uh, a meeting that we were at with Joey um, in the Salt Palace and at Qualtrics. We've held you know events there every year for twenty thousand people, and we literally walked every square inch together of the Salt Palace and walked through the run of show where where Pitbull's going to be performing to how many basketball courts we're going to have there. Um, I've been to all-star games where you go and it's like, I just want a ball. I want to shoot. And there was like no ball and no court. And it's like we have 14 different courts with, on top of that, a bunch of carnival games. Like every kid is going to come and be able to shoot. And whether it's a three-pointer, whether it's meeting a legend, or just, just to get that basketball experience. We're a basketball state. And this is a basketball convention. And that's that's what we're doing. And um, we're excited for that. Ryan and Ashley, you might have both just touched on it indirectly. But at the beginning of the season, I ask every one of our players, if you took me back to your hometown, what would you show me? So let me ask you, if I came into your hometown for this All-Star game, what would you want to make sure I saw in this process? And let me ask it a second way also. If I was a kid in the community, what do you want me to see? So both out of state or coming in and someone who lives here. Um, for an out-of-stater, I mean, the beauty shows itself, which is awesome. But I want you to meet our people because it's a super compassionate state, and I have pride in that. Um, and also, <coughs> I want you to experience the buzz, the electricity. So I think we're for sure bottling that up, which is awesome. Um, but for, for a youth... Um, kind of the same thing, because I want, I hope we're raising people who have as much pride as I do. I mean, I'm from Las Vegas, but I have so much pride in this state where I'm at now. And um, he has so much pride being here his whole life. But I hope we're raising this same pride. And I want them to come see the buzz as well. And I want them to see what Utah's capable of and maybe see even past that, what, where they get to take it. So that's exciting, actually, to think about where the youth who might come to, to jam session can envision it being in 30 years. So that's exciting. I think for me, you know, if I go back to even when we were in this process of wanting to be involved in the NBA, and it was looking very seriously like it wasn't Utah for a whole host of reasons, which we all know, and Ash was just like, no, we're jazz fans. This is who we are. Nothing else feels real. And it kind of put me in my spot. And then to fast forward two years and kind of be in this spot where it's like, okay, we're, we're here for a reason. What are, we, what are we doing? And for me as a kid, I always felt like, you know, you could do great things, but is it really possible in Utah? And... I think what I want to show kids is that it's 100% possible in Utah. Utah is not going to get in the way of you accomplishing great things. It's actually the opposite. Like everything we have comes from this state. And I think we've seen the state constantly high marking and high marking and high marking. And, you know, it's one of the things that we want to do is really highlight because cause oftentimes like, just like any state, you can show the low lights, that's easy. But this state has so many highlights. Um, and we've been the beneficiaries of that. And so I think we wanna show every kid that other people think their state's cool, where they live and where it's at, whether it's legends or people coming back. And, and just by people showing up here, and we've done a lot of hosting. I mean, that's one of the things you've, you, you've all seen with our, um, just kind of our ownership. There's Every, every week, there's just people up in Park City that are there that have never really connected the two. Or they come into town for whatever reason, and people are just reaching out. We want to go to a game, and that's becoming a thing. And we get the same response every time. Wow, wow, wow. Your people, your fans, this experience is next level. So how do we show that throughout? And I, I agree with Ash. Like, one of the things that we have is, for, for the most part, and, you know, I, I think people really enjoy the people of Utah. And so we want them out to integrate, not just people from out of town. So we've been focusing heavily on creating environments where 
if you are here in Utah, you can participate. I guess on the flip side of that, what kind of an opportunity, because like you can see it around the arena, you've made the real push to accommodate players who are coming to Utah for the first time. What type of an opportunity is this to learn about what we still don't have or what you can still offer or how to grow? Yeah, that's a deep, that's a deep list. I mean, because that's a moving target. You know, someone in the league just won up, what don't we have, what don't we have, what don't we have? Um, and we've started on that journey and saying, hey, like, how do we, how do we make sure that um, we're constantly innovating and kind of pushing the limits to what, what Utah can do? And, and there's a lot that you can control and there's stuff that you can't control. But from our standpoint, um, I think we've curated a lot of that. Like one of the things that we were working on was the west side of the stadium. And so with Cactus Jack and what we're doing there is pop-up stores along the west side, the depot. Um, we have a full half pipe <laughs> that we're doing that's free for everyone with the Utah Sports Commission and Cactus Jack to bring a bunch of snowboarding in there. Well, that would have likely have been just something that no one thought about and it kind of would have been a dead zone during All-Star. And so the ability to activate that is like, I hope everyone sees that and says, actually, that's a spot that should be that way all year round. And, you know, I think maybe some of these restaurants are like, okay, you know, maybe 11, 12 o'clock at night, we, we should stay open a little later, right? Because it's, it, it can work. And, you know, go try to get a reservation for All-Star Week anywhere <laughs> after, after the events, it's gonna be tough, right? And, and that's the impact of the local businesses. Um, whether it's even Airbnb folks or hotels, like we're out of hotel, are we out of hotel rooms? <laughs> I think we're out of hotel rooms, right? I, I, people were staying down in Provo from yeah. what, I, what I could see. That's, that's a push for every single um, business owner of like the art of the possible, um, including new hotels that are opening up this week in the state. And so I think it all kind of gives us a push of of what it could look like. And if you look ahead and you say, okay, this is a, everyone should be watching this because with the Olympics coming and other events, I mean, this, this is gonna be incredibly impactful. $250 million plus of economic impact in a four or five day period, that's pretty, that's pretty impressive. Ashley, Brian, um, how, um, 30 years ago I got to experience two of my former teammates being able to to participate in the All-Star Weekend. As you, as this team has come together from its beginning to now, how special is it to have guys on this team that probably no one expected to really achieve much be involved in this, this All-Star Weekend in Lowry? And yeah, I mean, well, it's part of the buzz and the energy of Utah is that we are a growth mindset state. We take things and we try and improve them. And I feel like that, obviously there's cases where that you know, isn't always true, but for sure us, like growth mindset oriented. And it feels like this team came together and everyone was ready to grow and improve. And, and it's just been a really fun year and how incredible that we get to have players participate in the fun of next week. And it really adds to the narrative of Utah that we are producers, we are entrepreneurs. We get in and we build and we grow. And that's what this team has done in a very short amount of time, which is super cool. And it definitely adds to the vibe of the state. You didn't see that one coming? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think, I think that, I think Will's done a great job at, at putting our guys in position. I remember speaking to the team early in the year and we want, we want everyone to have their happiest time here in Utah and we want people to have their best years and for for most of the history of this franchise that's kind of been the case if you actually think about it and i think that people can get locked in here they can get locked in on basketball um and i think that we're just kind of building off of that you know with with lowry coming in and and doing what he's done but also you know, those that are going to be participating in other events. Um, I just got the list of how many players are going to still be here just to hang out during All-Star. It's incredible, you know. Um, it's, it's, it's actually pretty exciting. It's a little daunting because we got to make sure that they're all 
getting their their experience as well but um that's fun that also says a lot about the state that everyone's not jetting off to cabo right they want to they want to be here and hang out uh, just a, a question back to, to this idea you think of you know we think about the super bowl and different events that turn into just corporate events there seems like this concerted effort to make sure that this is a community event and specifically for you know our younger generation um when you think about what your kids will experience in this uh what what is your hope that their what their takeaway from this event will be uh as far as their ability to to really with their friends you know enjoy something like like this event we, we were we were this week and we were talking to one of our close friends who who works with us in we were trying to find the headline of the paper because there was a picture of him at jam session and he was talking about it like with a in bunch of kids in 1993. Yeah. And like we were scouring all weekend, like the internet, <laughs> like how do we find this? And, and I think if we could just replicate that, like where the same experience I had all the way through, um, it, it's pretty, it's, that, that's great. Like, I don't think we need more than that, is that everyone looks back and say, wow, that, that was incredible. Aside from the events we're talking about here, um, the amount of calls we're having from corporate sponsors or brands who want to activate during All-Star, um, we don't have enough spaces. Like it, it is crazy what corporate brands, and I mean, there's always the TNT, Jordan, all of these. There's probably another 30 events going on every night where corporate brands are saying, hey, that's where we need to be. We have to be doing something, whether it's a brunch, a breakfast, I mean, or dinner. Like we have to be having a presence there. And that's when, when I talk about corporate leaders, um, celebrities, everyone coming into town, that to me is a sign that Utah's a spot to be. And that that doesn't always happen. Right, it's not a secret that kind of your average fan is priced out of like the big time events, like the All-Star Game uh, in particular. So was kind of creating so many different events around the community and so many different things that could be accessible for sort of your average fan, was that taken into mind because of those price points yeah i mean i've been to seven all-star games and that's i mean unfortunately i mean they even cut down half the arena or what is there fourteen thousand tickets that i mean if you think about how many are really for sale and not given to the league teams corporate sponsors there, there's not that many tickets as you would think it's not a regular game um and so absolutely, I mean, jam session, um, if you think about, I mean, HBCU. Well, we also have yeah, free H events. Yeah, like free events. Jam and HBCU and starting at $10. I'm rising stars. I think I looked on and I could, you could find tickets for $45. Um, um, if people want to go, um, there's, there's something for everyone. And that's been really, really important to us, um, having been in that spot. Ryan, you see what the O2 games did to Utah, and sort of like a ripple effect to the state. Do you feel like this week-long sort of event can be there and can kind of do something like that where there's this worldwide vision and there's further growth here? I mean, all the lights will be on us, um, but I think it's just one more compelling event of a series that we need to have and we should have and we're going to have. Um, but I think it'll be interesting to look and say, okay, even afterwards, we're, we're gonna post mortem. Hey, what, what could have gone better, right? What do we need to do to prepare for Olympics and different things like that? Um, because it has been a while, and if you look at the economic growth and the population growth of Utah, plus just, I mean, when, when Ed was here, you know, from Delta talking about the velocity of, of travel uptick, uh, people are moving around. And Utah is a real easy place to get in and out of. Um, and, and I know we're, we're branded sometimes in the league as a small market. We're not a small market. I mean, the fact that you can just jump on a plane and head, land in France, land in Amsterdam, soon um, Asia, like it, it's, the, a lot of people can come in and out of this, of this state and it's relatively easy. Um, you know, Dana White 
talked about that. It's easy to do business here. It's easy. That's another thing that we want to portray um, as a state. It's just easy. It's easy to come in and out. Um, that's why we're getting such an uptick, I believe, up in Park City and Deer Valley is, you know, the amount of Californians, they're not going to Tahoe. They're not going to these other places. They're just, it's easy, it's predictable, they can get in and out, um, and it's easier. And so I think that's what we want it to, to feel like. It's like, wow, it just works. Utah just works. Well, yeah. and we're hoping, well, there will be a long-term effect on businesses. I mean, we have 160 businesses who are joining with the NBA Rewards Program, and it's incredible the opportunity that is that they have and hopefully that will last a long time for them so i mean the opportunity of this next week is is great and hopefully will last a long time yeah i'll just add on like i mean a gateway we're, we've got a whole group of, of a whole show of pop-ups right um and i think you're seeing some of that on this side as well like that's a whole new concept of the art of the possible so if they go really well um, you could imagine, you know, how we think about retail in, in this state. I think, I think Utah should be the winter clothing kickoff for all retail, right? Um, when, we get, when we get players or people or fashion com comes in here, like, um, they all get to wear their, their winter clothes, which is 75% of the leagues in a cold environment, right? Like, it should all start and end in Utah every year. Um, and so I think all of that is, is possible for us to kind of reach up and, and grab some of these new opportunities. Joey mentioned the number of events that are gonna be happening over the week and the over break. I know how involved you like to be in things, and so Come I'm on. wondering how difficult it was, because that is a, you can't touch everything, right? So how have you been able to kind of pick and choose like where you're actually gonna be involved? Um, well, there's two of us. Yeah. <laughs> and also, I mean, this organization is incredible. So we have amazing people around us. And so it feels like an awesome touch is being had on every detail, which is incredible. And we can sleep the week after. <laughs> <laughs> like, you get to do this once every 30 years. Like, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna rally. Um, I've told everyone that. It's like... We're, we're up at six and we're gonna go. I wanna be at the HBCU game. I wanna be a jam session. Um, there's a pitch competition for black entrepreneurs. Um, there's a pride event. We're gonna be at it all. I mean, one of us are gonna be, we're gonna be going and we might be dragging five kids along. Like, <laughs> it's okay. We can you just make it work. And I, I'm sure many of you are gonna be doing the exact same thing. It's like, get your schedule out, plan it out. Um, and and it's, it's fun. And I think we're going to try to learn from every single one. Some of it's going to go really well. I'm sure some of it, there's going to be success disasters is what we call them, where too many people show up and it's like, wait, um, that wasn't intended. Um, and that's, that's, that's how we learn and grow. Um, and I, I'll echo with Ash, like our organization is awesome. Like the way they've been able to manage the season, manage this, um, if you go up into at the, at the it's ZZBC. If you go up into the the Science Bank conference room, you will see like big shower boards with the entire lineup of every day, every event, every venue. Um, you know, with whether it's at the U or here or All Star practice, um, it's been incredibly curated. Um, the way that we've gone after and picked the uh, the the foundations. I mean, if you actually just look at that, $3 million to whether it's the Boys and Girls Clubs, whether it's the Pride Center and Circle, or, um, you know, the Celebrity Game, Fight for the Fight, is a beneficiary. Um, it, it's, it's, it's pretty impactful for this state. What, you know, I mean, we, you've touched on kind of what this mean, can mean going forward, but what role is just hosting some of these past events and the successes of those events? What, what role did it play in being able to draw the All-Star game back to Utah? I, I mean, it's been 30 years to the date. I'm pretty sure they just go every 30 years, <laughs> every team gets it. I mean, this wasn't, well, it's I not mean, like it's, the Olympics. It's beyond just that particular event. I'm talking about other events as well, when, when you kind of just bring, up, bring them in as a whole. 
Well, like, I, I mean, I'll tell you from, from the corporate standpoint, I mean, we were always told that once our event, like the Qualtrics X4 Summit, got to be a certain size, we had to go to Vegas, to the point where Vegas was calling us, saying, hey, like, when are you coming? Almost presumptively. And it's like, no, we're, n we're not coming. We're going to keep it, and we're hosting it next month here. And, and so I think we've had to really think outside the box how will it work, how do hotels work? How does everything work? And um, I think by doing that, I think, and, and others have done it, whether it's outdoor retailers, different things like that, um, you're seeing you know two massive new hotels pop up. That that's that's huge for our, and another one coming on this side. Um, those are those are that's that's a big deal for hosting stuff in the future. And I, I always I always look at the growth of a city by the amount of cranes in the air, and we got a lot of them in Salt Lake right now, and that's a good thing. Who do you want on your celebrity team? Um, I just want gamers, <laughs> right? Uh, we need some shooters. It's it's tough to tell uh, who who's coming in. Um, but I I mean Joey, what how how's that how's that going? Uh, we got a good meeting this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just want like one or two more players than Dwayne's got. <laughs> I guess, I mean, Thor kind of touched on it a little bit by saying that, you know, you didn't really expect, nobody expected to have, like, a big showing from the Jazz in, during All-Star Week. So I guess, what has it been like to watch the emergence of Lowry, the rookie year that Walker is having? It's good, good energy. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that, that, I mean, for those who watched Lowry this summer, saw – saw something there um it's not by accident that that we have lowry i think that if you spend a lot of time with da and jay-z like they have loved lowry for a long time they both do there's not that many seven foot shooters um who who can do what what he's done um and that was a key part i know that cleveland did not want to move on from him um or ochai um but if there was ever what looks like a win-win in a situation, this this is definitely one. Um, and so I think that it, and you look at the fan votes. I mean, this was this was pretty unanimous across the league that that people were watching what what Lowry's been doing. Um, I remember J Kid coming up to me, um, who's a close friend, uh, after the game. Uh, what was it last week or and and just said, "Dang, Lowry's good." <laughs> right and and that's a that's a pretty big compliment coming from him like you've got something there um and then i think if you look at walk from the from the time he started i um, mean first of all what a what an incredible personality right like you love that kid and and just how he's progressing and and i think it goes down to um the team trust first the team's got to trust in him and then second like how will and the staff's bringing him along um they didn't just throw him in right away. They're working him in, and um, he's had a couple performances that you're just like, wow, like this is going to be fun. And so, but I also think you look at you look at JC, you look at Mike and Colin, and and everyone. It's it's it's, it's everyone's really bought in, and I think that's what has made it possible. Um, plus a couple moves to kind of free Lowry up. Like I don't I don't think that's talked about enough. Um, you know, you make a lot of moves based on position sometimes more than who you can get back or what's going on because Lowry can't be Lowry if there's three people at that position. And so I think that um DA and Jay Z have, have done a really good job at it making sometimes hard decisions to to kind of push us forward. I mean, our goal is not change. We want to win a championship. That's the next phase that I want every kid to be able to see that you can win a championship in Utah. And um, you got to make tough decisions to get there. And this was an incredibly tough decision this off season. And um, to have it work out like this is, is as far as the all-star coming around and having Lowry in it, um, you know, that's not the most important thing, but it definitely is just a little bite size um, kind of moment for everyone that I think everyone will remember. It's one of those lessons that you talk about down the road. So, 
Are we even, Joey? Are you, do you guys have other questions for Joey from the NBA? <laughs> I mean, I, I'll ask questions if he wants to talk. <laughs> yeah, come on up here, Joey. <laughs> okay. That's right. Thanks, Ashley. Okay. <laughs> Logistically, when you sh when the planning of like an all star event starts, like where is the starting point? Um, well, well, certainly, I mean, this started in 2019. Right. It, it takes an incredible commitment from a, from a city and a state to be able to, to, be able to make, commit the type of resources necessary um, to bring an event of this scale to the city. So I think it's, it starts there with a tremendous commitment across the team, um, across the city and across the state that they can develop and bring the type of resources required to bring a truly global event into uh, into an American city. So I think that's where it starts and then becomes the fun part. Um, how do you build the puzzle? And we've got an incredible, incredible team here with uh, with the Jazz, but also at the NBA that are in, uh, that are able to build those puzzle pieces together. And so I think that's what's been the last 18 months in particular has been a combination of NBA leadership, Jazz leadership, and in particular Ryan and Ashley playing such an incredible close role, um, being so focused on literally every detail uh, that the combination of all of that is going to lead to some really exciting results for everybody. What has jumped out to you about Utah and Salt Lake City since you've been here and started this planning process and then obviously going to see it come to fruition? Yeah, it, it certainly, as I referenced earlier, to me, this is, uh, this is a state that has been transformed. I think many of the stories that have been told about this city and state are 15 years old. And so what's so exciting about uh, the opportunity we have is to put this city on a global scale. Um, I've been amazed by the incredible people, by the leadership, by the tech vision. Um, in particular, uh, as we think about, you know, more tech IPOs have happened here uh, than in New York and LA at times. Um, that's an incredible story that we're so excited to be able to tell um, when we think about the innovation that has generated from, from this city. Um, I, I've often walked around here and said, if Salt Lake City was a stock, man, I'd be buying. Um, and so I think we're, we're excited to tell those stories to our, to our global fans physical area of the downtown of Salt Lake is not huge. Is that beneficial or does that make it harder to get stuff done? I think it's an incredible opportunity. Um, it does it require some creativity, certainly, but one of the things we learned uh, often from you know our time when we were in the NBA bubble even was a walkable campus place. Um, the ability to be able to walk from one venue to the other is a really interesting opportunity for our fans who are able to, to get downtown and be able to see multiple of those events. As we referenced, um, you know, this event is not just the in arena events, but is a number of fan events, a number of partner experiences that are going to come to life. And so the opportunity for a fan to be able to go from one place downtown to the next and not have to get into transportation is going to be a part of this event that's really going to be unique and I think exciting. I guess, uh, how much have you had to deal with, like, city planning for as far as, like, shutting down roads and how that's going to impact, like, people who actually live here? Yeah, certainly. It, it's a part that we think a lot about. Obviously, there are, there are members of this community who have to work on Friday morning, um, and so we think a lot about how do we build something that is inclusive but not disruptive. And so a lot, of, a lot of time and effort goes into that. And Visit Salt Lake um, is another group that's been an incredible partner. Um, certainly, as we think about both the, the city of Salt Lake and, the, and Salt Lake County, their respective leaders have been incredible partners. As we've wanted to make sure um, the UTA and all of the additional resources that they have dedicated to making sure people can move around this city has all been with the idea of we want to showcase um, everything this ha city has to offer. Uh, for those who are thinking about maybe moving here one day, certainly one of the exciting parts I think about the tech scene uh, is that when you are building technologies at the rapid rate that the city is, you are an importer of talent. And when we think about that across the world, and that's a great opportunity. So we wanna make sure that everything works this city in, and we're gonna, we're gonna spend a lot of time and resources dedicated to, to ensuring that happens. Say a family comes from 20 minutes south of here uh, for one specific event, you recommend they 
they take the train? Do you recommend they come in here, they park and walk? I mean, what's that situation kind of going to look like? Yeah, yeah, certainly. I mean, I think UTA has dedicated a lot of resources to ensuring that they're adding additional additional tracks and making sure that that's an accessible way to get around the city. Um, certainly, we've been working with the ride chair organizations to ensure that they're that they recognize this is going to be one of those global events we're going to want to um, attract as many as many opportunities as people want to be able to get downtown um, but then certainly we expect that if you're able once you're able to get downtown we're going to encourage people to walk um, because i do think there's going to be a lot of possibility and a lot of excitement to be able to see that energy um, also just the marketing efforts that we put around the city i think of it as like art pieces um, that's the way I'm imagining that the signage coming together and all of those pieces. So we want people to be downtown. We want them to walk from place to place, see the opportunities, feel the excitement and energy. And so once you get downtown, we're really excited about, about your ability to be able to get around. Thanks, Joe. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all.